In today's video at Happy Place Home Studio, we're going to talk about exporting your music project for mixing or remixing. So you've taken your time and your effort and you have recorded a project in your digital audio workstation software for yourself or for others, whether it's a single vocal or guitar part or an entire band uh, playing a song. And you've certainly uh, done at least a preliminary mix for that work. But you'd like to maybe have another set of eyes on it and get another mix done by an outside party. This is very common. And what we're going to cover in this video is the practical aspects of how you get your project into a format that that outside party can use to do a mix and return that mix to you. The basis of this is that I did this for the first time myself recently. We have a track that a group that I was with recorded almost 20 years ago. And I have a, a good friend that uh, is actually a very, very experienced engineer, sound engineer, producer, and has done a lot of mixes. So I decided to give that a try and see what the track would sound like with another set of ears and another set of tools mixing the project. So let's walk through that process and first talk about some of the reasons that you might want to have someone else do a mix of your work. To be honest, uh, I never really thought about doing this before. I really thought that the mix was such an inherent part of the creative process that I really wouldn't consider someone else uh, doing that for me. But, you know, it's like any other part of recording. You know, there's always a better guitar player out there, drummer, group, writer, etc. But in the area of mixing, there's a lot of expertise that goes into creating a great mix. So if you created a, a piece of work that you really care about, then it might make sense to have the best possible ears, eyes, expertise, and tools on creating a great mix. Now, not everybody's in the position of having a good friend that's willing to do that. And a lot of times if you're going to have this done, you know, it might cost you money. So that might be a factor. But here are some of the reasons that you might want to have a mix done. First of all, just get another set of ears on it. And, and people will produce something that you would not have thought of. They'll take your work and potentially do some things that are completely around the bend from what you created for yourself you might actually get a much better or at least very different view of the work that you have created. Another practical reason is that a, a mixing engineer, an experienced mix, mixing engineer is potentially going to have a lot of tools as far as plugins for the digital audio workstation software, high-end plugins, high-end tools that they'll be able to apply to your mix that can really vastly improve the sound and, and bring an element to your work that you would not have been able to do otherwise. There's a creative take that another experienced person especially might have on your work that uh, can add vast elements to, to what you have created and really uh, create a different experience for the listener from your original recording work. So those are just a few of the reasons that you might want to have a mix created by an outside uh, person. So you might be thinking, you know, why do I have to go through any steps to send my uh, work out to somebody to do a mix on it? You know, what, what, why can't I just send them what I originally recorded? Well, in some cases, you might be able to do that. You might be able to just send your DAW project, re regardless of what your digital audio workstation software is, if the mix engineer that you're working with has the exact same setup, has the exact same DOS software, odds are they don't, and, and, uh, or they might not. And even if they do, they might not have the exact same plugins that you used to create the mix, to create your, your original recording. So for those reasons, you might have to do some work 
to take your tracks that you've recorded into a state that any mix engineer with any digital audio workstation software is going to be able to pick up and put into their digital audio workstation software and start working on it. So there are many intermediate tra you know, transfer states that you can put your music software in. And, and for each digital work audio workstation software that's out there, there may be different steps that you have to follow to get it into that state. I use Digital Performer. I'm going to show you the steps in that software. But if you're using Pro Tools or Ableton or whatever you might be using, the steps might be different, but there will be analogous steps in that software for you to figure out to get your tracks into a state that your, your mix engineer is going to be able to pick up and work with. So that's some of what we'll go through uh, and talk about. And we'll also talk about some of the mechanics that you'll want to have in place to simply share your files with that mix engineer. Uh, I'll use one set of tools for doing that. There are many available. Uh, and we'll also talk a little bit about that process so that you can keep, keep the files straight as you are working with your mix engineer so you don't lose work or time because the files are getting mixed up. So that's another element of what we'll talk about. And finally, we're actually going to have a chat with my friend, Gary Wagner, who is the mix engineer on this particular project, and talk with him about some of the things that he did in getting the original work from me, what he applied to the tracks, and some of the techniques that he used. And we'll talk a little bit about some of his experience that puts him in a position to be a really good mix engineer. So let's dive in. Okay, as with any successful project, the first thing we're going to do is review everything we're going to do to have a great plan to move forward with. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk with our mix engineer to find out some really key information that's important. Number one, what's the file format that the mix engineer would like to see or what can they work with? So this will be WAV files, AIFF files, whatever file format you can produce, you can create, that the mix engineer can use, you're going to decide what that is. You'll also talk about the bit depth and the rate that you want to use for your files. So for example, 16-bit versus 24-bit, um, 44.1K, 48K, 96. These are important decisions to make. Typically, your mix engineer will want the greatest bit depth and at least 48K to work with so that they can have as much of the track information as possible. But this also relies on what you actually recorded in, of course. You want to be on the same page with the mix engineer before you start doing anything at all. The second thing you're going to do is get your project organized so that you know exactly what you want to export. Which tracks do you want to export? You may have created a lot of tracks and a lot of takes that you don't need. So you want to make sure that you're only exporting the tracks that you do want in the mix to be mixed and the takes that you want to be mixed. As much as possible, you'll also want to control the track names. The more descriptive and accurate the track names are, the easier it will be for you to give those to your mix engineer and he'll know what to do with them. He or she, I should say, will know what to do with them. Now, in my digital audio workstation, if I forget to name the track descriptively, it will have a generic name like audio-01. And that doesn't help my mix engineer very much. I might have to manually rename the files that I produce. Or I will have to give the mix engineer a map to what the files are, a cross-reference, if you will. Column A is the file name and column B is what it is. The more descriptively named the actual audio tracks are, the better off you're going to be. Hopefully, your digital audio workstation will allow you to put a descriptive name on the audio tracks and export them with that name. But odds are that, like mine, you're stuck with the name that you started with. 
when you are creating your projects, it's always a good idea before the audio files start being generated to give it a good descriptive name. You're then going to use your digital audio workstations process for taking the tracks that you have and generating new files, more than likely, that will start at the same place and end at the same place and have the audio that you've recorded in them. So there is usually a specific process that you might go through for this in Digital Performer. I'll show you the process that you'll go through, but different digital audio workstations have different processes for taking your tracks as they exist now and putting them into a format that has the same start, same finish, even if it's only a two second um, sound bite that you've got uh, in that track so that your sound engineer doesn't have to try to place those little tracks throughout the mix that they can just put them all with the same start, all with the same end, and then the mix engineer can deal with it from there. Then we'll talk about some of the techniques that you can use for exchanging files with your mix engineer. In my case, I'm going to use Google Drive to set up a folder or a series of folders where I can put the sound files and the mix engineer can return the mix to me where I can put in updates and how exactly I can create that and share it with the mix engineer. Now, whether you're using Dropbox or other tools or Google as I'm going to use, you'll want to have a way to easily and quickly exchange files digitally with your mix engineer. Okay, we've got a plan in place, but the very first thing we're going to do before we start anything at all is we are going to make a copy, full copy of our project. And we are not going to use our original project. We will use the copy of the project to do all the work that needs to be done to export the information throughout the process with our mix engineer. So I'll show you how you make a copy in Digital Performer your digital audio workstation will have its own process for doing the same thing. It is extremely important that you not do any of these things on your main project. Your main project needs to stay pristine and you don't want to make a mistake, lose any of your audio files, rename any of your audio files or anything like that. So don't skip this important step. Make a full copy of your project and only work against that full copy. My next step before I do anything else past agreeing on the information with my mix engineer is I'm going to save a copy of my project. Now I'll show you how that's done in the DAW I use, Digital Performer, could be slightly different or quite different in the DAW that you use. But whatever you're doing, you wanna make sure that you're saving a 100% duplicate of the project, including all of your audio files and any other files necessary. So here's how I do that in Digital Performer. All right, we will go to File, and Digital Performer has a nice option, which is Save a Copy As, and that will uh, open up a dialog box here for me. Now, I do not want really the name to be confusing at all. So I'm, gonna, I'm literally going to call this LG, which stands for the song title, Love Gamble, for Mix. Export. Okay. And then I want to change the directory. I don't want to save it in the same LG current project that I started with. I just want to save it to LG Current, which is a directory I created for this purpose. Now, you could be even safer and really differentiate where you're saving it, even to another device, but I'll be all right with this. Now, this automatically selects an, op an option that's really important here. Duplicate audio and copy the shared samples to this project. Shared samples means if I have a shared samples with other projects that they will get their own copy into this uh, new project folder that I'm creating. All right, so when I've got that the way I want it, I'll go ahead and click proceed. 
and that is going to save the copies uh, that I need. Okay, I've opened a finder window so that we can see here in my documents folder that I've got my LG current directory that now has two projects in it, the LG current project and the LG mix for export project. And if I open that folder, I'll see that I have the directories that digital performer needs, but that includes my audio files. And if I open that up, I'll see I've got all the audio files that uh, the uh, project has in it. Now notice that many of the audio files uh, have meaningless names, but a lot of them have very meaningful names like lead guitars, organ, etc., etc. And those explicit file names are going to be really important as you do your export. Now, you won't want to make a mistake that I've made in the past, which is I've successfully done the export and save a copy as of my project. So I have a, a pristine, clean copy that I want to work against. Don't forget to close your main project and open that uh, project that you just created. So I'll go ahead and do that right now. First, I'll close my project. And then I'll use the open function. And navigate to find the new project that I've created, the LG for the Mix project. And that should look exactly like the project that I created it from, of course. Now I'm ready to proceed. I've made the copy of the project, I'm working in the copy of the project, and I'm ready to move forward. Once I've made my backup, and I'm absolutely certain that uh, things are secure to move forward against the backup, I now, in Digital Performer, need to select the tracks or the sound bites that I want to actually export. Now, this process can be quite different between digital audio workstations. Some DAWs have a very explicit option, one step, to export this. In the case of Digital Performer, I actually have to select the tracks and then export them, uh, which is a, a different function that I'll show you in just a moment. So, uh, the organization of your project obviously is very important to be able to do a clean select of all the tracks. Now, you can do multi-selects and all that kind of thing, but if your tracks are all sorted in order and the ones that you want are all together, it's going to make life a whole lot easier. Also, in the case of Digital Performer, you know, I basically have to try to draw a box around everything I want to export. So I'll use a couple of um, options and functions here to try to make that easier. One of the things that I can do is a command left arrow to basically reduce the horizontal size of the tracks view. So now all of my tracks and all the sound bites that I want are on one screen and it makes it really easy for me to draw a box around them. Now you notice that some of the tracks uh, are longer, basically the full length of the song, and some of them are shorter, and some of them are just small tidbits. So. Uh, you need to get them all, and remember our, our, our task here is to do something that makes them all have the same start and end spot. So I'm going to go ahead and grab all those tracks, select them, and then I will use a function under my audio menu called Merge Sound Bites. And what that will do is it will take the tracks that I've selected and it will put them all to the exact same start and end point. It's a little difficult to see when the tracks are selected, but if you watch, you can see that actually happening track by track as it goes through. And not only does it uh, make them all have the start and, and sa same start and end point, but it's applying all of the effects that I've used and all of the things that I've applied to each track so that the resulting audio file, a WAV file in this case, is going to have everything I put in it. Okay, when that process has completed, 
all of your tracks are going to be visibly the same length. All the tracks that I've selected are now have the same start and end point, now have all of the effects applied into the resulting audio file, and we are ready to go on to the next step. Now that I've successfully executed the merge function in Digital Performer, which again is the way that my sound bites are transformed from whatever they look like in our tracks window before to consistent start and end point, plus all effects applied in the resulting sound files. I have two good ways to export those sound files for the purpose of transferring them to my mix engineer. Well, and you'll notice I reconfigured the screen slightly to give my sound bites window over here on the left a little more room. Okay, so in the sound bites window, all of my sound bites all of my takes, all everything I ever did in the project, including the merge that I just did, are here. So what I can do uh, in Digital Performer here is I can view by source type, and that will put uh, the files, uh, arrange them by how they were created essentially, or what, uh, what their source type is, and one of those source types is going to be my merge sound bites. So I um, can select all the merge sound bites in the ways that I select things with Digital Performer, of course, which are pretty much Apple standard functions here. And I can choose Export the Selected Sound Bites. And that allows me to choose some key options here, including where I want to export them. So I'll go my documents and I'll, I'll want a fresh directory for this uh, so I'll go to LG current and here's my mix project and I'll simply create a directory within that folder I'll choose new folder and give that a name And then some options down here at the bottom can be important. Um, one is the format, and this should be the format that you have agreed on with your mix engineer, of course. And I'll just use an uh, interleave wave format. And we're ready to export. So I'll go ahead and do that. Now that'll take a couple of seconds, doesn't take too long. Uh, I don't have that many tracks, they're not that large, so it doesn't take that long to accomplish the export. Now the other way that I have to do this, which can be even easier if the default file format of what your DAW produces is in fact what you want, is simply to go to your mix project um, and sort by uh, date modified because the date uh, you know of all the merge files that you just created are going to be today's date so all those files up there at the top with today's date are exactly what we want to send out and as long as the uh, wave format or whatever format of the audio files matches what you've agreed to with your mix engineer you can just grab them that way and not have to go through the export sound bites function. So we now have the files that we want and our next step is to put the files in the right place for our mix engineer. Okay we have exported the files that we want the engineer to have into a directory called mix export. So let's take a look at that directory and the files within it. Now, as you can see, most of these files have a somewhat descriptive name, even if they're a little weird. Things I might have to explain to my mix engineer, like our singer, we called her the diva, so we called her D for short. Uh, there's guitars, there's percussion, there's uh, leads, etc., etc. Most of these files have um, an explanatory name that our mix engineer should be able to hang with. 
I could rename the files at this point if I wanted to. So, you know, what you want to do is make it as clear as possible what everything is to your mix engineer. And as we talked about earlier, if your files have generic names like audio-01 or something like that, you really do have to do something to let the mix engineer know uh, what he's looking at. What I do want to do at this point is I want to copy all these files to wherever the mix engineer is going to be able to pick them up. So, you know, this is a, an external decision that you have to make that is not something your DAW is really going to handle for you. Um, you know, actually workflow is a more important, uh, more and more important part of a lot of uh, software. So your, your DAW may actually have uh, ties into cloud services for file transfers and things like that. But uh, I'm going to just go through kind of an older school type thing here to put these files somewhere where my mix engineer can get them. And hopefully that somewhere is a, is a collaborative space uh, to allow you to freely exchange files and do different versions and all that type of thing. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to use Google for this purpose. And all I'm going to do right now is copy these. And I'm not going to go in detail through how to use uh, Google because you may use that. You may use something completely different. You, you may use Dropbox or any one of a number of you know, Microsoft, Amazon, whatever services that allow you to do file exchange with other people. There's a zillion ways to do that. What you, what you do want, again, is an easy way to put files online uh, on a high-speed service, share the files with your mix engineer, allow your mix engineer to share files back with you, and Google uh, Drive is just one of many, many, many ways to do that. Okay, I have created a Google Drive folder called Mix Files for Gary, and I've shared that folder with Gary so that anything I put in it, he has access to. Anything he puts in it, I have access to. Also, he or I can create subfolders within that. And now all I need to really do is move the files. So having a way to easily share files, quickly share files that your mix partner has direct access to without having to do any kind of physical media is the modern way and the right way. Make sure it's secure. Make sure you're sharing it in a secure fashion so that your uh, proprietary material, your, your songs and, and what you've written uh, does not get out into the public. This is the end of part one of exporting your mix. In part two, we'll have a very interesting interview with the resource that I chose to work with in exporting my mix, Mr. Gary Wagner. And you'll find out a lot about what happens in the process once you've sent the files and they've been properly received. And we'll talk about a couple of other interesting things as well, such as the mastering process. So join us for part two of Exporting Your Mix. We'll see you next time on Happy Place Home Studio. Thanks for joining.